Hello everyone, this is Mark Simon and I am the co-founder of Brax.io. In this video, we are going to cover using Brax to manage and optimize Rev Content Campaign Boosts. There are three main parts we are going to cover. Creating campaigns and ads, streamlining the optimization, and tracking performance post-click. This video assumes you are familiar with Rev Content. If you have never used Rev Content, we have a separate video that covers getting started with them. First, after you create a Brax account, the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to be asked to enter your Rev Content client ID and secret key. This is not the username and password that you use to log into Rev Content. So where you get this is under your account settings, and then scroll to the bottom. You'll see stats API credentials, and this client ID and client secret are what you're going to put into Brax. If you don't see these in your account, email support at revcontent.com or your advertising rep, and just let them know that you want the stats API credentials, this client ID and secret, and let them know you're using it for Brax so that they'll give it to you quickly. Once you've done that, you'll see this campaigns overview inside of Brax. And from here, you're gonna see all your existing campaigns and you'll be able to edit them and view the performance of them and even duplicate them. So this little blue icon here, that's what allows you to edit. This lets you duplicate. Over here is how you turn campaigns on and off all from the same screen. So if for some reason you need to turn all your campaigns off, just hit select all, hit this pause button, and that'll pause them all. What's really nice is if you click on this to duplicate a campaign, you'll have all your existing settings in here. And if you scroll down to the bottom, I don't have any set up, but if you have any widgets whitelisted or blacklisted, they'll be show up here. So you can quickly replicate a campaign with the widgets that you've already blacklisted or whitelisted. And just hit save here and it'll create a new campaign. By default, we just throw this word copy in here, but you can edit the campaign name or any of the other settings. The other thing you can do when you're creating or editing a campaign is you can add a schedule for day parting. So you can do this for individual days of the week or Monday through Friday, whatever you want. You set the hour and the minute that you want it to happen at, and then you can choose a few different actions. You can change the CPC, you can change the budget, or you can turn the campaign on or off. So if there are certain hours of the day that you don't want your campaign running and you don't want to be setting Google Calendar reminders for that, just come in here and create a schedule for it. The other big part inside of Brax that you'll find really useful is that you can create the ads and then you can use them over and over. So when you go to new ads, new ref content ads, uh, if you're creating Outbrain or Taboola ads, you can reuse those and push them to ref content from within Brax also. But we're going to go ahead and create a new one. So this creative group, it's just a name inside of Brax. It's not going to be used anywhere else. And then the destination URL is your landing page. So I'm just going to copy this one that I already have. This tracking code, this is for the URL level tracking. The only thing I really recommend tracking at this level is the ad ID. Everything else I recommend you track at the campaign level, and we'll cover that a little bit more later. Go ahead and put in your brand. And then the content type, if you're familiar, there's article, mobile app, or video. I'm going to stick with article for this. One thing that's really nice in Brax, if you have your titles in a spreadsheet or somewhere already, you can just copy them, jump in here, paste them in, and we're going to parse them down the list. And next I can either drag images or click to upload them, or I can grab some image URLs. Now I already have some image URLs in this spreadsheet, so I'm just going to grab those real quick. And then I'm going to hit fetch images, and it's going to import those images. and create a preview. So what we do inside of Brax is we actually take these three images and these three titles and we create all nine combinations. The other thing you can do is if you have an image and it's not quite what you want, you can crop and adjust this image here. So I can do that, move it around. Maybe I want to make it a little more bright. Maybe I want to change the color a little bit. Hit save, make the image pop. So now we're going to crop that image to what you wanted and we'll update the preview here. If there's certain ones you're like, you know, actually I don't want that one. I don't want to try that one. I don't want that one. You can cross those off. Then you hit next. At this point, you have two options. You can just save the group in Brax. This is useful if you haven't created the campaign. So let's say you created the ads and you're like, oh, I forgot to create the campaigns. Just hit save here. They'll save them in Brax and then you can go upload them after you've created the campaign. 
or what you can do is you just select your campaign, your account, and then you can select multiple campaigns here. So I'll just do a quick search for Prax Demo, select my two, and then I hit upload. What this is going to do is upload it to those two campaigns and save the group in Brax so that I can reuse them on future campaigns. So we'll go ahead and hit that. And then once it does that, it'll kind of put them in a queue and you'll be set to go. So that's creating ads and uploading them. To access them later, just go to this creatives. You'll see them right here and I can upload them wherever I want to again. I can also go in here and view what creatives are in there and I can duplicate this group. Right, so if I want to change, let's say I want to use all the same ads, but I want to change the URL, just hit duplicate and you can do that. The other thing you can do is you can say, well, actually, I just want to use these two ads in a new campaign because those were the best performers or I want to retry them. Just select those two, click upload to rev content, and you'll see it's just going to upload those two ads you've selected. So that covers ad creation and that covers duplicating campaigns. The next thing I want to go into is when you're looking at a campaign. So if you click on any one of these campaigns, what will happen is you'll get our campaign manager. And from here, you can see a summary of the campaign by day. You can see the ads that's under content. You can see the target performance or the widget performance. We also allow you to all these up here. If you see these blue underlines, that means you can just inline edit. So if I want to change that to say six cents, I can do that. If I want to increase my budget, say to $200, I can do that. One thing you'll notice at the bottom is we have widget performance in here and we can also pull in your data from Google Analytics and we can also import your data from Click or Thrive or Volume. You can adjust the columns however you want and show what you want and what you don't want. Let's say you see a bunch of uh, widgets in here and, and you just want to block all but say a few of them. You can go in here, multi-select, and then just hit pause and that's going to block them all. You can also just launch the widget optimizer from here and you can do a whitelist or a blacklist. In addition to widget performance, we also have target performance. So you can go in here to your targets, you can block those, you can also inline edit any site bid. So if I just want to bid seven cents on one and maybe five cents on another, you can just inline edit all of those. And again, we'll match up on your Google Analytics sessions or your volume or Thrive data also here. Okay, next we're going to cover how to use rules to optimize Rev Content campaigns. And rules are really powerful because they allow you to essentially take the optimization actions you would normally do and apply them to every campaign or as many campaigns as you want within BRAC. So where you access this is under the rules menu. Once you're there, some of the rules we have, you can pause campaigns, you can pause ads, you can block widgets. So just no block publishers inside of Brax is the block widgets. And then you can also block targets or update target bids. So those are kind of the, the, the main rules that people can do. I've created some. So the create and edit screen look the same in Brax. So if I go in here and let's say I want to block low CTR widgets because I want that CTR to be higher. Uh, it'll show you the action and then I can filter to for this since I want it to be widgets only I'll choose rev content I can select one account um, and then I can select one campaign or multiple campaigns or just have it run across all of them So if I wanted to select multiple campaigns I would just go in here and add a second filter and you can do that as many times as you want The other way you can kind of filter on campaigns in here is you can click an additional condition here and do campaign name contains and put a naming convention so if I you use like desk for desktop or MOB for mobile, you can use that naming convention. Uh, the other thing is, so I've got this set up to where campaign spends greater than $10 using the last three days. We can use yesterday through the last 14 days here. Um, you can look at the publisher CTR I have in here and then I also have the publisher CPA. One thing you'll notice is that you do have to have one campaign spend and one publisher metric for rules, uh, at least for this specific one. But on your kind of second and third rules, you can select any metric you want that's in the system. So that's really useful. You can give you a lot of power to whatever you use to optimize on, you can select here. We usually see people using CTR, CPA, conversions, um, and pages per session quite a bit. Those are the, the most common ones. So once you're done with that, you can just hit save. And that's going to create the rule. The next piece is running the rule.
So when you hit run here, what it's going to do is give you a preview and then it's going to allow you to confirm. So I run it, it gives me an overview of the criteria I've selected, it shows me that data here, and it's showing me the campaigns and the widget IDs that match that. If for some reason I'm like, oh, you know, this one's close enough, I don't wanna do this one, I can uncheck it, or maybe this one's a better like, hey, I wanna give this one a little more time, and then hit confirm and it's gonna block those. So until you hit that confirm button, no action is taken. Uh, once you've created a rule in here, one thing that's nice is you can actually automate and say, hey, for this rule ID, run it every 15 minutes using a, a, another tool called Postman. And we have a video that shows you how to set that up and use a Postman monitor to, to run these rules as often as you want. Another common rule that we see, you know, is pausing ads. So you might want to, you know, look at a criteria and say, hey, if the page views per session for an ad isn't anything, uh, you know, show that. You know, this one didn't match anything, so sometimes you'll have this, and usually what you'll want to do at that point, if you, you know, you can go edit this rule, um, and, you know, make it be a little more broad to see, you know, what criteria you want to use. So let's see if that one runs anything. So now I have 107 ads that, that matched that across multiple networks, and so I can just hit confirm here, and it's going to pause all of those ads. Uh, if for some reason I don't want to do that, you know, I can just cancel here or I can just click the back button. Once you run a rule, at the bottom here will be rule history. Um, if you click on the name of the rule, that's going to show you the current criteria of the rule. But if you've ever edited the rule and then ran it again, you can just click on this job ID and it's going to show you the criteria of the rule at the time you ran it. And it's also going to show you, you know, the, the specific widget IDs that were blocked in the campaign name and account they were on. So that's rules. Again, you can do this on multiple actions, you know, on really anything you need to do to optimize the campaign. And that's where the real power of Brax is, is, is getting those set up once you're done with the manual analysis. Some people just run these a couple times a day instead of automating them just because it's a quick way for them to do the optimization actions but still have kind of a human review element in there. Hope that was useful for you. If you have any questions, just reach out to us, love at brax.io, and we're always help, happy to help jump on a call, whatever your preferred contact method is.